Hello and welcome to Group 6's midterm presentation. Uh, the Super Sixers consist of Evan Starkey, Rennell John, Alex Walter, Quentin Tingwall, and Austin Jones. We will be talking about the new startup company Hover and the characters uh, involved and the dilemmas that they face in the startup of their new company. Jacob, a man truly obsessed with Back to the Future, who has tried countless times in many years to replicate the infamous hoverboard uh, that he has dreamt about for so long. After many trial and error uh, accounts, he thought he finally succeeded until he realized one problem. The technology is not yet caught up with uh, what he is trying to do, and the weight of an adult human is just too much uh, for the hoverboard at the size that it would be needed uh, for it to be practical. Although he was extremely frustrated, he found that uh, he could make something even smaller uh, that would hover. So in doing so, he started playing around with little success, until eventually he threw his phone over one of the plates out of anger, uh, and found that it not only levitated, but also a chain reaction uh, was caused and actually charged the phone. Uh, and so hover was created. Uh, he did this in downtown St. Pete and we will follow it from there. In our story we follow a young man and an inventor uh, with a futuristic idea uh, who enlists a band of misfits uh, with key talents and skills uh, in which they focus on targets and problem solutions. Uh, the target management concepts for this show will be managerial ethics, group collaboration, resource allocation, identifying problems, and implementing decisions. Hoverboard is synonymous with Back to the Future, uh, and more specifically Back to the Future Part 2. Uh, and for years, Jacob has been trying to create it. Uh, in the end, he's created something different, uh, which is still faithful to the movie, but also very practical uh, in the, this technology-run world that we have. And in that, he has introduced the hover plate. Uh, it can suspend phones midair, uh, and it also does something else. It will charge the phone. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't without some fallbacks and hiccups. Uh, and so along the way, he and his team have to make managerial decisions uh, based on ethics, uh, establish relationships with uh, suppliers, build upon their competitive advantage, that, I mean, they basically created this market. Uh, they have to stay true to uh, the Hover's values and the values of Back to the Future and basically making the future now. Uh, and they also have to make unprogrammed decisions. Jacob is faced with collaborating with his cross-functional team, a band of misfits, uh, in order to identify problems and implement decisions and allocate scarce resources to the best of their abilities. Hover is the first product of its kind. The hover plate is revolutionary in that it not only gives you a sci-fi, scientific, futuristic feel, it's also practical. It will charge your phone while levitating three to four inches off the plate. Uh, Jacob was able to create the first ever hover plate on his own, uh, but now he wants to share it with the world. So he has gathered a band of misfits, as you will call them, as a team, um, at, which consists of friends and associates that he's met over the years. Um, and he found that they were all equally sharing a common goal of bringing the world into the future. Uh, shortly after launching Hover, however, the team discovers a problem. Uh, if you leave the plate unattended for long periods of time and don't move the phone off of it after it's fully charged, it has a tendency to overheat. Um, the team is then tasked with making decisions uh, on the best course of action uh, to find a solution and implement it so that Hover can still be successful and not have to worry about catching on fire like the fake hoverboards that took the world by storm a few months ago. Jacob is the leader and creator of Hover. Ever since Jacob was a kid, he has been trying to recreate or create things that he saw on TV and movies. 
whether that be capes to fly around like a superhero or duct tape on his hands to climb the walls like Spider-Man. He's always had a strong desire to make the impossible possible. And his his current mission is Back to the Future Part 2. Uh, in that movie, they have hoverboards. And ever since he saw that, he's had a strong desire to create a real-life hoverboard, not a gimmicky one. So, in that process, he has discovered that the technology just isn't caught up yet for such a technology, unfortunately. So... What he has found is that he can create a smaller version that can levitate uh, devices. And in the process of that levitation, the device also um, gets a charge. It, it charges the device. So he has gathered his band of misfits, as you can call them, uh, to basically see this vision through of making uh, this hover plate. Uh, and give it to the everyday user uh, to cut out wires, basically. And he wants Hoverplate to be available to everybody. Kyle is a longtime friend and supporter of Jacob in all of Jacob's endeavors. Uh, he's been with Jacob since the beginning. He was even a very uh, helpful hand for the trials and tribulations of the Hoverboard. Uh, and he's now the financial backer for the hover plate. Uh, Kyle also happens to be the youngest son of an alleged crime boss, but that doesn't really matter so much. Uh, but Kyle did get a business degree, um, and he is seen as a very critical thinker, uh, and he's very, he's very, he's just very smart. Uh, he is a very good negotiator. Uh, he watched a little bit too much uh, law and order growing up, as you can say, uh, and he's also very ambitious. He's a risk taker. He he wants to get stuff done at no no matter what the cost. He is willing to do it as for what he believes, and he is a very strong believer that Jacob will be successful, and is willing to do whatever it takes to help his friend. Lucy is also a very old friend of Jacob. In fact, they used to date in college. Uh, Lucy and Jacob parted ways when Lucy found that with Jacob still living on his couch and still wearing capes and trying to duct tape himself to the walls like he was Spider-Man, she found that their paths should part ways. Uh, however, Jacob reached out to her uh, with his idea of hoverplate, and Lucy feels that this idea will work and that it's worth investing her time and effort into it. Uh, and she wants to be with her old friends. Uh, she's very outgoing, friendly, courteous, and extremely hardworking. She's from humble beginnings. Uh, she's a Harvard grad. Uh, she's a technical wizard uh, with everything. She just she's a genius. Uh, she is an ex Apple app, uh, engineer. She actually helped with the manufacturing of the Apple iPhones all the way up until the Apple Six iPhone Six. Uh, she has a lot of business know-how. She knows how to talk to people. She knows how to listen, and she knows what she is doing. Uh, and she is extremely interested in helping Jacob and making the future look much better. Ladaris is an upbeat, vibrant, compassionate, and empathetic individual who is always looking out for everyone's best interests. He was born into a low-income home in a rough town near Anchorage, Alaska. Both of his parents believed they were victim of their environment and never put any effort into improving their lives. Young Ladarius saw this and knew he wanted different. Due to his socioeconomic background and environment growing up, he didn't see college as an option. Once he finished high school, he secured a job at a local strawberry farm where he started as a trimmer. Initially, he had motivation issues, and this ultimately led him on a path of self-discovery and development. As Ladarius began to grow as a person, he became more engaged in his work. After many years of hard labor, he managed to work his way up the ranks and become a manager for the farm. He had an excellent team and all the strawberries that he could eat, until one fateful day when the IRS forced the farm to shut down because a supervisor, Rodolfo, had been falsifying information on their tax documents. After this point in time, he focused every ounce of effort he has into being the best manager the world has ever seen. 
Ladarius cares more about managerial ethics than nearly anything else in his life, and he is a firm believer of the moral rights approach. Charles is an entrepreneur with an affinity for magic and magnets, very analytical, and has been known to think outside the box. Employed as a third-party consultant, the team calls on to act as a disturbance handler for the faulty wiring. Excellent resource allocator in negotiating complex situations. While admitting some past challenges have been very difficult, there is yet to be a problem he couldn't mitigate. Excellent team player and works well in all types of management structure and corporate culture. He is mainly used in episode 2, where the problem of faulty wiring arises and he figures out how to fix the wiring issues on the plate. Uh, he is an excellent problem solver. He is an expert on cross-functionality. He's proficient on groupthink individuality balance. Uh, and he's very knowledgeable and experienced in the magnet industry since he's been in it for over a decade. Houdini is the magician with the cynical top hat. He is actively seeking an opportunity to cause a mutiny and has a strong desire to claim power. He constantly plays devil's advocate and justifies engaging in unethical activities, desires in being the primary leader, and he is the authoritarian in nature with traditionalist views of how organization can run, but you can blend into more contemporary environment environments when he has to. Ultimately concerned with the bottom line and sees a chance to take advantage of the relative infancy of the tech company and the initial high R&D costs showing a net income. He is very resourceful in his ways. Uh, he's able to adapt to various roles. He's a bit of a chameleon, uh, which is where he got the name Houdini because he could magically appear and do whatever was needed of him. Uh, he doesn't really have a moral compass, uh, which becomes dangerous when you're trying to make money and save money um, at the same time. Our target audience will be the workforce of the general youthful professional working age, i.e. 18 to 24. Some issues established will be ethical decisions making uh, and social responsibility on issues such as outsourcing. Adapting to technology and how to work in groups to face difficult tasks. The characters will use managerial roles and concepts from our class to deal with these problems in a reasonable manner. A major focus will be on teamwork and negotiation with multiple points of view. Uh, the setting will be based on fantasy and science fiction with comedic, uh, comedic undertone uh, with the help of uh, to help keep the audience more engaged. Jacob by chance has developed the historically significant hover plate uh, and begins to pull in his friends and create the hover company. He first begins by pulling Charles, a close confidant and major supplier of electromagnetic products. Deciding that this product is a possibility, they pull in Lucy and Houdini as well. Together, they formulate a business plan to pitch the idea to Kyle, who sees the rarity of the product and agrees to fund hover development. Initial funding was severely limited when Jacob discovers that the board overheats during charging in the hovering process, which is the primary, primary niche of the company or the product. Uh, a contingency plan is created tasking Lucy to solve the problem on the overheating while Houdini steps in to volunteer cost-cutting procedures to keep the product on budget and create a buffer for the competitive advantage. Houdini also consults with Kyle to convey his concerns with Jacob's lack of management background and discusses the possibility of management alternatives. Jacob begins to develop the strategic vision with Charles and decides that the best approach to develop their desired corporate culture. Kyle is uncertain on how to approach the future on the dynamics of management function and coincidentally crosses path with his wise and benevolent old friend Ladarius Figgins. Kyle's character is introduced as well as his infamous father, Percy, uh, episode 2 shows how the managers at Hover identified a decision situation. The company hires Charles and Lucy from Shiesty Consulting, one of the industry's leading consultant firms for assistance. Charles and Lucy are then sent to troubleshoot 
the malfunctioning hover plate. Uh, Charles presents the reports of findings, uh, recommend options to resolve issues, and estimate co at cost at the time uh, to implement change in a closed meeting. Kyle used the Alterian approach when he recommended not to conceal the malfunctioning probability of hover uh, if better quality components were not utilized. Kyle then secretly nominates one of his father's companies, Shine Industries, as the new supplier. Kyle guaranteed that all materials needed would be supplied at a lower cost than any other manufacturer. Jacob and the other managers are in awe. They all see that this could give Hover a competitive advantage over any other firms that may enter the market. Everyone seems to agree with Kyle. However, Jacob is now internally analyzing alternatives suspicious of Kyle's intentions. Shareholders and the other managers only seek profit. Since two board members were absent, Jacob has a few days to consult with Charles before giving his approval on new suppliers. Jacob has implemented the decision to go with Shine Industries. Charles has placed himself in the decisional role to negotiate prices and contracts with different suppliers, with some help from Lucy to stay within budget and be assured quality with the limited resources that they have. While negotiations continue, Lucy, Jacob, Kyle, Houdini, and with Darius define what values Hover shall hold. Do they value higher profits at the risk of customer satisfaction and safety, or are they willing to take the time and make sure that they create the best product that they can, while also serving uh, safety and satisfaction while staying in the range of their own budget? Houdini goes behind Charles's back and makes a deal with the new supplier for, molar, uh, for copper wires, which turn out to be faulty. An ethical decision was made to delay the product launch uh, after a series of group collaboration discovered that Houdini went to an unreputable supplier and made a backdoor deal for wiring that turned out to be no more than just copper painted wires. Episode 4 is the decision. The team decides that Houdini is not suitable to work for Hover anymore. His sheer lack of morals and absence of ethics do not resonate well with the vision or mission statement of the company. After having this conversation with him numerous times, he is not seeing any improvement. Everyone has had enough. Although he has made many contributions to the team, he also refuses to adapt the way he conducts himself in a professional setting. After a long meeting, the unanimous decision has been made that Houdini is too dangerous for the public's perception of the company and needs to be terminated. His termination was ultimately based on the fact that his constant violations of the code of ethical conduct were deemed unacceptable and detrimental to the success of Hover. With Darius is sent in to inform Houdini of this decision, uh, there is a great deal of tension in this scene, and Ladarius begins to tear up, thinking that there could have been a way he could have fixed this. The team is quick to provide moral support for Ladarius and tells him that he is the best manager they could have ever asked for. With Houdini packing up his desk, the group begins to discuss tactical plans to ramp up sales and customer satisfaction. On his way out, unfortunately, Houdini slipped and fell into the shark tank in the foyer, resulting in his untimely death. The launch is seven weeks after the loss of Houdini. Uh, and in those seven weeks, a lot of progress has been made. Uh, they've had a lot of successful beta runs. And with those beta runs, the products have become better in pretty much every way. Uh, and with these beta runs, there's a lot of buzz has been created. Uh, over 300,000 pre-orders have been made for Hover. And Jacob and his team are hard at work preparing for this launch uh, and preparing for mass production of the hover plate. Uh, strong support and a very excited and eager team have uh, made this possible and they would not be where they are today uh, without such an amazing team uh, and they are, they are ready to launch hover and it will be successful. Now, companies have to go through trial periods, uh, small-scale small beta tests. Uh, they do it all the time to give the public to or give the public a small version of what they have. Um, and it, 
the, pro uh, the product then receives feedback as to what needs to be done to fix it, uh, to fix bugs or whatever for a major release. So you're not releasing a buggy product. Uh, Pre-orders are very important for uh, for the company as well because pre-orders give investors an eye on how much interest the company has been receiving um, and they will then help with uh, speeding up production and establish partnerships uh, and which they can go from there with. For this project so far we have created our characters, created our storylines for all of our episodes. Uh, we do have some outlines um, what is left to do, finish uh, recording all of the episodes, uh, post-production editing, of course, uh, group of reflection. Uh, what we will want to do is work on scripts, uh, writing, uh, how we're going to do it in video form, and we will go from there. So far, we have received uh, 10 out of 10s on both of our works. Uh, for group projects and we hope to stay successful as a group moving forward with the rest of the semester. Thank you very much. This has been the Group 6 presentation on Hover.